we we can start. So welcome to uh, this presentation. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome to this presentation on deep upstream. So first, my name is Daniel Morin, and I work for Collabora. I was supposed to present this with Aaron Boxer. You might have seen his name on the ONX det object detection and uh, inference. But uh, yeah, you were supposed to present with me, but you couldn't make it. So, but I just want you to know that you, we really work together on this and uh, at the presentation level and also at the technical level. So uh, I've been with Collabora for about a year and a half and uh, where I work on JStreamer all day long. And um, in the, I've been working on embedded system since about 2006. And uh, for the m biggest part of it in the uh, video surveillance industry, um, where I, at the beginning, doing more multimedia. Um, and I, I kept always doing multimedia. Um, and at some point, I, I move on to the analytics team and eventually be become the technical lead for, for this team. So I work a lot with um, different fork of GStreamer um, uh, made by, by vendors. Um, and uh, I, I experimented with it. And, uh, at some point, I went to you know pre-release trainings, and I remember a specific one where I was. They were saying like uh, I was asking question, and it, it kind of you know allowed to shorten the 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 effort of uh, doing what we had to do. And uh, I was asking at the end like, well, there was piece missing here and there, and I knew about enough about JStreamer to know that I could close the gap very easily. And uh, I also had in mind that eventually maybe we want this to be run on different platform too. So I asked, so are you going to upstream all those change? And, and but the answer was uh, we will not go to this extent. So I think that kind of saying the title, so it's, we call it deep upstream, meaning we go from the ground up and uh, to to bring everything that we need to do analytics in in JStreamer. So that's. The, that's the, the, um, the goal of our project. So the plan for the, this presentation. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about our goals with this presentation. And, uh, and the first part is really about analytics metadata sharing. And the second part, it's about uh, like uh, a re generalized inference element. So we want to be able to, uh, uh, to, to use it for uh, any model. Yeah. So our goals is to facilitate the production, um, the production and consumption of metadata between JStreamer element. I mean, just the same thing as you have with any JStreamer element right now. I, I believe that his strength is to you, you have a defining architecture that is working with a dedicated task for each element, and each element is able to build on top of the last one. And, and that I, I believe that's one really uh, strength of JStreamer. But at the so that's something that we. It's kind of not completely there when you're working with analytics element, and so that's something we would like to 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 improve. Um, obviously, minimize the effort of moving between platform. At the moment, with what's available, it's there's quite a lot of effort to if you you're building with uh, what with a vendor fork, for example, if you want to move to a different platform, you're going to have to spend quite a lot of time to rework your software to, uh, to be able to deploy on a, a different platform and uh, facilitate heterogeneous analytics pipeline. Uh, well, exactly in the previous uh, presentation, we heard like tracking. Tracking typically is done with a computer vision approach as opposed to inferencing is, is done with a machine learning approach. Um, I mean, you can also do tracking with a machine learning approach, but the, there's a, this is a quite heavy technique and in embedded worlds, you're, you're in general, you benefit from using a computer a, a vision approach for doing tracking. But having all those things working together, um, again, this is, so that's our, one of the goal of the, our project here. So just a couple of definitions. Probably most of you already know, well, a tensor, well, it is just a, you know, a n-dimensional array, a blob of data, Basically, we have tensor all over the place in JStreamer. I mean, a, a frame is definitively a tensor. Um, you know, if you think about it, like uh, like the, the the way it's formatted, it, it's a tensor. And um, in the inference pro process is just you know having 
prediction made uh, based on input data and also made on, uh, on a model. So just that we all understand each other when we go through that presentation. So JStreamer analytics, why, why would we use JStreamer for doing analytics? Well, it's kind of similar to, uh, to multimedia processing. You're getting uh, data, you, you, you're transforming to, to some extent, and, uh, and then giving to your output to the next one to, till you, you've reached what we want to achieve with your, your, your multimedia pipeline or your analytics pipeline. So they're, they're similar and, uh, in that sense. And, um, so, so that's why I think it's it's been um, it's an inter uh, it's an interesting foundation for doing analytics pipeline, uh, and sometimes we like for sure JStreamer is really thriving in the multimedia world with video, audio, and text, but it, it's really not limited to to those media type. Um, and, and to support this idea, you all, if you look at the source code in JStreamer, you'll only find video, audio, and text in the, in the plugin base. So in the core, there, there's no reference to, to, those, to, uh, to those media type because I think the idea was to, to keep it generic, to, be, to make it extendable to any type of, of media. So even um, so sensor data, I, I think it definitely fit with JStreamer. And um, yeah, so, so, there, so there's... And, there's been many forks from JStreamer to do analytics, and I think that support the idea too that it's it's an interesting framework. We just need to complete the work, upstream it, and uh, and and be able to 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 use uh, the best component that everybody developed and de develop develop our own component uh, element for this to um, and uh, and then we don't we're not stuck with a specific uh, platform. Um, yeah. Just the little thing missing is we need to get to <laughs> we, we need to upstream. Um, so, but what are we missing in JStreamer to achieve this? Uh, I, I mean, natively. Well, we we for element that that um, that does analytics, we already have them. We have ONX, we have OpenCV. Um, but the question is, can we have them work together? Could I, could I today get an, an, an output from ONX, from the object detection, and use OpenCV uh, to track that object? Mm, no. And, and I think that the real, not really at least, uh, and the, uh, the reason for that is that they don't, we're missing a way to transport the, the analytics metadata between the element, just like video, just like other media. Um, and, and so, yeah, that, that's one thing that is missing. Um, and uh, so once we have this, we'll be able to do um, analytic pipeline refinement. So have a multi, like, have a multi-level analysis uh, and uh, um, uh, where each element is specialized to, 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 and build on top of the, the first ones. So, so now I'm going to dive into how we could. So, so that's sort of what we're missing today in JStreamer to 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 uh, to have um, a refine to do refinement of analytics. Um, so, in terms so the analytics meta. So, what do we need? We need extensible uh, an extensible format. Um, there's no. I mean, there's a model and uh, new techniques created everywhere. There's no way we're going to think about all the, um, all the fields that we could need uh, for, uh, to, uh, for the metadata. So we need an extensible way to do it. And we also need an extendable way to define the relation between them. Again, not doing the analytics is not the task of one element. It's multiple element, and we need to be able to, to uh, to correlate them together and 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 record the relation between this metadata um, that and has the metadata moved down the pipeline, it can be consumed. Um, so we we already have something called in uh, GST meta in JStreamer and um, in JStreamer at the moment, like most of meta are or the, the scope of it, or I mean, it's related for, to the entire buffer. But now with analytics, you're going to have quite a lot more uh, metadata than 
we, we used to. Um, and uh, so one of the challenge for it is to, there's a memory efficiency there, as um, everything was allocated uh, for every buffer, and so, so we need to find a, a better way to, a more efficient way to manage memory for it with all those analytics metadata. And um, uh, another, th another aspect is that, I in general, you would have a list of metadata, and then uh, you will have to you know, iterate through it. And you don't have, we didn't have a built-in mechanism to, to, or at least a general uh, mechanism to, that defined the relation between the metadata. So that's something else that we, that, uh, um, we think that we, we need to, to add. Um, and the, the last aspect, the metadata that, that, that are uh, available, they should be independent of how they, produ they were produced. If I produce an, uh, a tracking metadata using OpenCV or, uh, or an, another technique, it, it should be sort of transparent of how it was produced to, to keep the element um, um, reusable. Otherwise, otherwise, they will have to depend to a specific uh, um, format of, of a metada metadata. Um, so, the next one. So that's what we came up, and I'll uh, with, and I'll explain it. So basically, the um, the like the biggest square there, the analytic relation meta, it's a GST meta. There's only one of them that will be added to the to a buffer, and on this buffer, it actually internally to it, there's a, a, a like a, a pre a pre allocated buffer where we're going to append. Uh, specific metadata. Um, so, so this buffer can can grow in time, but also will be reusable as the buffer and uh, reach the sync element at the end of the pipeline. So, uh, yeah. And um, the uh, like on the right side, the analytic relation to MTD data. Where I use MTD is I, I want to avoid it to use meta because in general in JSTorm when you have meta, it, re it, it it's referred to something that is a type of uh, GST meta. Those are a little bit different. It's really a flat C structure, and uh, but has a similar concept to uh, like a J object where you're going to. Like this would be the base, and you're going to stack a, a new C structure on, on top of it to add the fields. So, for example, the object detection that is there, the first uh, field, the parent, is the analytic relation in MTD data, and then you'll have the location of the object, X, Y, Z, an object type, a confidence level. So, this this new structure is something that would be inserted in the in the the, the relation meta this, that is appended to the buffer. And as the, as the frame goes down the pipeline and new analytics are happening, they're, they're all appended here. And so if I had 100 object detection there, they would all be there in this. I, I'm not going to have 100 allocation. They're, they're, they're just going to be appended to this, to this buffer. And, um, and once we have a refinement, what happened is that you want to, to say, well, for example, you have an object detection, and uh, later on you have a, a classification. You want to, but you have hundred object that ha that you had hundred object detection, and you have also hundred classification. You want to relate them to them, and you want to be able to retrieve them very fast. So you, we need to wait a way to to uh, to define the relation between those. And that's we came up with a, like something based on a bit on the graph theory. So we have a, a matrix embedded in this this uh, this meta, which defines this relation. So so basically each each um, well each row in the each uh, element of each metadata on the analytics result they correspond to a line in row in this matrix, so you're able to define the relation with them and uh, explore them like, like be, uh, how to say, it? with the best method, let's say. And um, so, and the last thing is that eventually this, this um, especially during the startup phase, this large buffer, you, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck with guessing how much space you need there, but, uh, um, it, so it will be, especially with it, with the fir like first couple of frames, it, it will grow, and you need like you cannot just give a reference to the 
to the to the ele that's mostly elements that use this. You cannot just give them a, a reference. You need because uh, they would they will be reallocated. So what we came up is like a handle. You have a, like this analytic MTD. So you'll get this handle that uh, this one just have, like it will allow you to retrieve your metadata even if there is a reallocation happening. Um, and uh, so the it, like the API interface to to this metadata is is generally based on this analytic MTD that is. Uh, um, Will help. Will avoid the issue with when, if there's a reallocation. Um, so yeah. So basically, what you what you what you end up is a buffer that has multiple metadata and that ha that have defined uh, re relation defined between those metadata. Uh, and, and that would be for one object that was detected that was uh, that is related to one segmentation. Uh, maybe like a mask of specifically which pixel belong to that object in a classification. Um, and, and then you'll have this um, repeated multiple time on the buffer. Um, maybe, so here's the API to create uh, um, an, an analytics meta. So for example, the object detection is, could be a template, could be a, an example of it. So you know, let's say you, you want to define um, a classification. So you would just, uh, you know, create a structure, put the parent as the relation meta, create whatever fields that you needed for it, and then um, you're going to call this uh, GST analytics relation meta add. You, you can provide your own API for your metadata, but this will be able to add it to this large buffer. And uh, what, uh, if you want to retrieve per, um, the specific fields for this metadata, then you, you can just uh, use the, the last API. Um, yeah. yeah. To retrieve, like, it, it's just uh, based on the, the location in the memory. And uh, so that's, so I think we're, we're, we are still, like, the API to create new metadata is relatively, it's simple to use and uh, it, it has the benefit that you'll be able to relate your custom metadata to existing one or even a new one that you didn't think about will be able to relate to it. So you're not, you're not stuck with a predefined scheme of relation between metadata. It's, it's flexible. Um, yeah. So when you want to add a, a meta inside the element, the, that, that's what the... So the first step is to add the relation meta to, to the buffer and then you can like that that's the kind of API you would implement to uh, to like the add analytic object detection MTD you would like you would implement this based on the on, on how to say it? like oh I don't so on the analytic relation MTD data so the, it, it has the API where you can uh, um, add your, your, your specific metadata. Um, the last one, this is how you set relation. So let's say you, know, you, you had an object detection, so you have a handle on this specific metadata, and then um, you, for, let's say you crop this area, you did the classification, you're feeding to this to the classifier, and then you're having a new metadata, and you want to say, well, those two things are related together, that, that's the function you would call, that would set, that would define the relation in, in the matrix that later won't allow you to retrieve it. Uh, yeah. So exploring, so that's the other, like, that's re reading it. So you, again, you, you have the relation meta, you can, you can, you can uh, analytic meta first would be the, um, could be the object detection and you're, you're, you want to know um, if there's a relation between uh, a classification, then you're, the second, the analytic meta second, uh, you'll provide this handle, and uh, you can put condition. Like for example, are they related by what type of relation they're they're related? To? There, there's three: uh, is part of, contain, and just relate, like a, not directional. And then you'll end you'll end up with the path of all the the metadata nodes between those two. Um, Analytics meta, um, or you can just, um, if you want to, like for example, render the 
render the like do an overlay, then you ju you just iterate through uh, all of them. The, the the API is quite similar to what exists in GST Meta um, already. Um, okay, for yeah, so that that was the uh, what we added for um, uh, like the foundation we're 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 adding for an, uh, native JStream Analytics Meta, and and this is the inference. So um, what we, we already had an ONX uh, element, but it was specific to object detection. And so we, we split it in two because there is one part of it that is already very generic and the other part that is not. Um, and uh, so, yeah, here. And yeah, so, so what happened is that uh, generally what the output of the inference, you'll get a, a, a tensor that is a, basically all your metadata, all your infer the output are inside, but they are encoded in a format that is specific to the model. So you, if you want to, so by decoupling them, you'll you'll end up a re to, with having a reusable inference element, and you and you have to implement tensor decoders that are. Are, are specific to a model, but they're much easier to implement. And, uh, um, yeah, exactly. Um, the one issue that we, we found is that, uh, so now you'll, you'll have tensor that are going downstream, but we, you, you, and you need a tensor decoder that is able to recognize it. So it's quite similar to just a video decoder. Like the video decoder will, needs to know what is the format of this data. So we, we just uh, specify an ID to, to the tensor that allow the tensor decoder to recognize that, uh, okay, I'm able, able to handle this, the decoding of this tensor and uh, extract its data. And um, yeah, so we chose to implement this based on ONX because, uh, well, it's a in terms of format, it's a very well adopted format. I think all the inference engine are are supporting it like directly, or you can convert to or from it. Um, and uh, so, and also there's the ONX runtime, and they have many backend uh, provider, for example. Uh, it already support like OpenCL, CUDA, even uh, TensorRT is, is supported. So it's really reducing the. So there's already a hardware platform abstraction built into uh, available when you're using uh, the ONX element. So that's why we chose to to uh, to base the, our inference element on on this uh, on this project. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so I'm just going to show a quick video, and that is showing what what um, a pipe an uh, sorry <coughs> an analytics pipeline that is using what I presented, and I can go into uh, breaking down. I'll break down the pipeline to explain a bit more what is happening. So, so yeah, this is just it's detecting strawberries and leaves, and uh, and classifying them. And uh, yeah, there's also a segmentation happening to to give the specific area of the strawberry to the classifier to 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 be able to um, um, to, to have a better classification. Uh, so it's extracting the background. Um, well, just maybe before this, uh, talk about this. Yeah. So this is the kind of application you could have for this. Uh, um, for example, you could think about the. Uh, uh, an indoor growing environment where maybe you, you, it would be it would be good to detect like a disease that happened into uh, into this air in into this environment can, because it can spread fast. So, like for example, an application would be to detect early uh, signs of like unhealthy strawberry before the uh, this kind of disease spread. But that's just an example. And uh, okay, so I'll break down the pipeline now. Ex explain. What I've talked about more theoretically before, how how it is used. So what comes before the video converter is like it could be an acquisition or a playback. It's a video source, and uh, so on the right side we have the ONX. So it loaded the model. So based on the model, it will uh, expose like which um, 
capability, like the the, the source path capi the source path capability it has, it needs. Sorry, and um, um, so so then the 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 converter before already know what pre-processing it, it needs to do. So in this case, we could use just uh, the, the existing video converter. It would rescale the image, do the cropping. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's what we, we, we didn't have to, to do any change in this area. So now uh, after the inference, what happened is to the, to the frame, there's a, ten, there's a tensor that is added. Um, this tensor again is specific to the model. This the, this data is not usable by. I mean, you need to know about the model to be able to use it. So that's why we we break down the tensor decoding that is the next one. Uh, you'll see fast sam like so. It's called segment anything. It's a, a model. Um, so 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 you have a, a, an element that that is specifically able to decode this type of tensor. But uh, and you, you if you well you can use it for a different model for a different training of a model, but it needs to have the the same architecture, and uh, so it will if it knows about a specific tensor and it it can retrieve this based on its ID, uh, it will it will uh, decode the this tensor and and convert it into a, a metadata that is usable by uh, anything else. That that's what. That's what I was referring. That is independent from how it was produced. Um, so here, so here we, so ba basically, we have object detection out of this image, and uh, um, so we know in, in the metadata we know where's the strawberry on this image, but uh, we would like to to feed this to a classifier. Um, so we, this is just uh, an element we create, like for the purpose of this demo, but it used the metadata that, it is, uh, that, that I presented. So it, it, this, it, it's similar to uh, video uh, convert scale too, but it's able to use the metadata. So it, based on the metadata, it will uh, crop the, 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 the strawberry out of this image. And um, it will also attach, um, it, it, well, I, I will go to the next image that we. Yeah, it will crop the the image out of this uh, out of the bigger image and also attach a parent meta because at some point we want to bring back all the metadata to the original image. So, so so we add uh, in it, we add this parent meta. So now it will go feed into a classifier. Again, it's the ONX inference that can be used. Um, and then after doing this inference, we end up with uh, class with uh, classification meta, and uh, that are on each of those crops, and that each crop also have a parent meta, and uh, that that is it's there's a there's a relation with the object detection on the original image. So after. So again, this is just an element that we create for, for, for this demo, but basically using the relation, it's able to um, get back to the ori original image and just uh, aggregate all the metadata there, and, um, and then it's doing the, and then we can do the overlay uh, of the object detection and the classification. So here the, the overlay, it's the consumer of this metadata, but we could really easily imagine that it could be uh, on with elements streaming out, or it could be, um, um, you know, uh, uh, like a Kafka sync uh, sending those metadata to the cloud. It's uh, how you use the metadata. It's up to your to your special specific use case. Um, yeah. So what's next? So we need we still need to do uh, to do more acceleration. Um, I mean the the on X runtime is really helping, but. Uh, um, there, there, I think there, there's still work to to improve the acceleration, um, floating point model. Like actually, the the int eight that are more performant, but uh, it is it's easier to support in JStreamer because uh, of how the video is is encoded in in raw already. But um, it, it, there's a lot of model that are especially when you're during the the development phase, like. Uh, 
the model will will be in float so and so it's a bit uh, it would be really convenient to support uh, floating point formats uh, as opposed so s since that that's something that is used during the development of models um, more tensor decoder so as there's more model that we would use uh, you, you want to have more tensor decoder uh, decoders and uh, but again, they're easy to write. So you know, if you if somebody go through this process to have its own model, or it, it's easy to to look at uh, one that exists and and adapt it to your need to have your own tensor decoder, and the output can use the the metadata that I produced that will allow to efficiently use memory and to define relation with uh, pre-existing and and pre-existing and uh, in other metadata that uh, could be happening downstream. Uh, tensor decoder bins, batch processing, inference bin, may, uh, in some case it might be useful to use a specific inference engine as opposed to on an extra runtime. So the, we're thinking about we could use a bin to select the specific one on the platform you're running. A Kafka sync to send this metadata to a cloud in, in some case on VIF. Um, there's already on with element in JStreamer, so in, in a bit more integration to be able to to be able to read this format of metadata and uh, and serialize it into an on with format to, to to be able to con to consume it, consume it from a on with client, um, yeah, and, and maybe eventually also uh, analytics metadata production consumption capability. So just like uh, today. Your, your, your element is exposing what, what is able to handle on his source pad and sync pad in terms of media. It could also expose what, uh, what metadata is able to produce and also what metadata it's, it's able to consume. So that's something that could be an interesting area. Um, yeah, so that's all. I just, and uh, yeah, I'll take question if somebody have there's a question. I think there's one here. Okay. Where? Uh, who was the? Um, there's a small effort ongoing on serialization of metadata, it's, which is slightly related to that. And one of the use of that is that you could actually generically uh, store and restore data like in things like KLV or other container format. Is, is there any plan to take that metadata, store it to disk for future processing, reprocessing, or reusal? Um, yeah, I, I think we didn't think about the specific uh, format to serialize metadata like for, for disk. Like the only one we were thinking is uh, on VIF, but uh, for yeah, it, it, I, I think it, it, it's achievable. We can, we can do this. We just need to do well. We we didn't really go through this path of the, the um, thinking about a specific format, but it, it's something that consume data, serialize it, and deserialize it later, and re, like reinject this metadata into uh, this framework, so you're able to, uh, actually you'd be able to defer your processing, so uh, maybe you just uh, do a first phase and later on uh, you, you're, able, you're able to continue the refinement of, of the analysis like from the recording, that I think that would be possible. Is there any support for or plans to um, try to keep the metadata on the GPU, for example, if the backends are GPU backends? I imagine as the models get more complicated and the yeah. metadata potentially gets larger, this could be beneficial for pipelining different models. Yes, um, yes, exactly. For example, uh, we we have a like GL upload. Um, like that already does this in a way, I think. And uh, so the idea would be to have a stream of uh, processing where you're able to to keep like to to batch your processing. So you could have a, a multiple inference, and the frame would stay on the GPU the all time. So, and um, yeah, I think we're, we're but we're. That's sort of like the, when I, I'm referred to more acceleration. I think that's like. Um, 
the kind of thing we would like to work more. So we have the, I think the, with ONX, we have the acceleration at the element level, but um, you, you do have a back and forth between the, the CPU and the GPU. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so um, that's something that we will be looking at, like to, to be allowed, to, to allow the, 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 the memory, how to say, the tensor to, to stay on the GPU and reuse them down pipe, uh, downstream, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Um, I have a question. Uh, when you mentioned um, the metadata creation, yeah. so that it could grow you know, downstream, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you thought of a mechanism uh, in a way that you can communicate to the producer what is the expected size so that the next time you can allocate the metadata with the correct uh, size and prevent reallocation downstream? Yes, uh, so th there's a, on GST meta, there's a specific, uh, um, how to say, function you can set there. So when the, the buffer gets uh, destroyed and sent back to the pipeline, the, uh, it, it can be copied on the, how to say, the new, the, so the new buffer that, it, like the buffer in the pipeline, the, 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 they will already have the, the existing um, um, GST meta, so um, uh, yeah, so it, it, so it will avoid to con continuously destroy them. So it, it, it's like the during the startup, like couple frame, you'll have a, a a tuning phase where the this will grow, but ap after a couple of frames, when the scene is sort of reach his maximum in terms of the object that are detected, and so your your buffer will be set in terms of size and uh, it, it will be reused. So it's like a buffer, a buffer pool, but for metas? Yeah. OK, good. It's a complete idea. So instead of trying to negotiate like we do with the, 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 the allocation query, the idea would be that uh, upstream will try to pull uh, those, and the meta can be tagged to be pulled so that they're not removed by the buffer pool. And so if you increase the allocation size uh, downward, da downstream of your pipeline and it comes back to your pool, it's going to be reused to the size it, was, it has been increased. So over time, it's stabilized and you have a, a bigger buffer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It relies on the pool. Of course, there's challenges with T's yeah. or anything that makes your buffer read-only. Thank you. Um, yeah, I thought um, so. Uh, there is also already a GST meta, and you're like adding a secondary uh, layer of uh, yeah, metas inside it. If inside you want. it, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I thought maybe it's uh, reasonable uh, to try to extend GST meta uh, to support uh, the like the, what what you want. Uh, yeah, or maybe actually create uh, new formats uh, like not X raw video, uh, uh, like mm -hmm. X analytics, uh, yeah. something, you know, just, just curious if yeah, you yeah. are having something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I, I think but at the beginning we were, I was thinking about having a, a, a GST meta pool, like a pool for GST meta, but, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, Effort that we go through that, and it's maybe a, a bit larger than the scope than analytics and JStreamer. But uh, so, um, if the how to say, once it's available, I think we can adapt the inner implementation to because uh, outside you'll still have those empty like the analytic MTD reference. So like externally to the API, probably you, you won't have too much uh, uh, impact. But uh, yeah. I just have one minute left. <laughs> if there's another question. No. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, also I just wanted to say uh, wait, it's thank you, special thank you to Elvie. You really supported me. Uh, it's, a, it's a maintainer in JStreamer and really supported me in, like, all, with all the JStreamer expertise. And Marcus uh, also uh, was a good source of uh, support with is ML expertise to understand like um, how to generalize thing and uh, how to um, like what a, 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 a um, 
to have a future view of like the an analytics pipelines here. Yeah. So that's all. <laughs> Thank you.